a chiropractor here in Columbus, Ohio at Columbus Chiropractic and Rehabilitation Center. I'm here with uh, Nick Colosi, who happens to be the owner of Smart Tools. And we're going to use him as a lovely model today because we're going to go over integrating Smart Tools into your rehab paradigm. And what we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about lateral epicondylitis or tennis elbow, which can be pretty stubborn and almost always involves treating the patient or the athlete in both the soft tissue component and also more of the functional component. So lateral epicondylitis, as we all know, is going to sort of be pain on the lateral epicondyle. Imagine that. Uh, if you palpate, you're going to usually find tenderness is going to be along the extensor carpi radialis brevis, which does not cross the elbow. I will tell you, however, there's going to be a fascial component that runs all the way up into the triceps. And then one that is oftentimes forgotten is the supinator muscle is actually going to be uh, painful and tender a lot of times. So these are the people that are going to have pain you know, God forbid they actually have it playing tennis, which doesn't actually happen very often. They may have it playing golf, um, usually on their lead arm. They're going to go in with their wrist extended at impact, and that's going to cause pain there. Or they just get it when they're lifting up a cup of coffee or driving a steering wheel, opening up a door, all these things. Very, very common condition, and the tools are really useful to fix this. So in the exam, they're going to complain, like I said, about lifting, lifting up a cup of coffee, opening a, garage, opening a door. Um, but what you might see is if you have them resist wrist extension, that oftentimes reproduces their symptoms. Um, you can actually have them resist individual finger extension here. And that sometimes is going to show you that there is a little bit more extensor digitorum longus um, component to that. right? Also, you want to be checking the flexors too, because a lot of times it is actually hypertension in the flexors that causes overuse of the extensors. Okay, so I'm always assessing the soft tissue of the flexors. I'm assessing the length of the flexors. Um, I'm obviously always looking at the pronator teres, which balances out the supinator. So if you've got someone that's sitting at a keyboard all day in flexion and pronation, they might get a super tight pronator teres that then uh, essentially overworks the supinator because it's balancing it out. Okay, So we'll talk about that when we get to actually using the tool, but in terms of assessment you have to look at the flexors. We have to be checking uh, the flexor activity here to see if it is a component here. Uh, the other more functional component is that you have hyperactivity of the structures down here oftentimes because of instability in the shoulder or even the neck. And so when you get any kind of proximal instability of the shoulder, the neck, the core, whatever you want to call it, then you're going to get hyperactivity in the more peripheral structures. So if I have instability of the scapular thoracic joint, I'm going to get compensatory hyperactivity of other structures like the pec major, the pec minor, the upper trap, the levator. A lot of these structures are going to alter the mechanics of the shoulder, which then block or prevent proper mechanics of the glenohumeral joint, of the elbow, the wrist, and all the way down the chain. So we can get dysfunction or pain in that lateral epicondyle because of instability of the shoulder. Another major cause that you get is actually you get weakness and insufficient activity of the hand. So everybody knows this in the foot, but what they don't realize is you have intrinsic muscles of the hand that if they don't have good function and good strength, you again are going to get hyperactivity of the longer muscles, the long flexors that actually come up into the elbow. So if I get weakness of the, the hand intrinsics, right, the lumbricals, the inner osseae, a lot of the thenar and hypothenar muscles, the opposers, all that stuff, then I might get hyperactivity of these flexors. When I get hyperactivity of the flexors, now I have a greater force that the extensors have to work against. Over time, that can produce lateral epicondylitis. So what we need to do is we need to assess and figure out, is it the intrinsic muscle of the hand that's the problem? Maybe. Is it the flexor tone, the flexor activity that's the problem? If it's been there long enough, is an actual soft tissue um, adhesion component to it, or and or is it going to be the scapula thoracic joint or possibly even the cervical spine? So what we're going to do is we're going to go over uh, the shoulder, an exercise for the shoulder to help with that.